Welcome into the PHNX Coyotes podcast brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a five star review. I'm Steve Peters, along with Craig Morgan on this fabulous Friday and without at Leah Merrill for the yep. last time this week. Yep. Thank goodness for us. Heavy lifting on this Friday. We got, we got a Travis Boyd interview coming. Another of the, our Minnesota State of Hockey kids that we've had in the last few weeks. We had Bugstead a few weeks ago and Travis Boyd today. But first, we'll get into a couple other things hockey-related. Craig, you ready for this Friday? I'm so ready for a long holiday week. And look at me. I got a head start with uh, not shaving. By the end of the weekend, I'm going to probably look like the Unabomber. But I'm not shaving all weekend, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking about taking mine off this weekend. I thought about it. but Wow. But yeah, the grace is out there. Me. It's a little hot out there for facial hair. Gray. Let's start with the World Championship, the Women's World Championship. They've got it down to the final four thoughts. Cool tournament. Uh, most notably, Chechia advancing to the semifinals for the first time in their history and knocking Finland out of, you know, Finland's always played for medals. Finland always shows up, as we know, men's and women's side uh, for the World Championships. Finland will not be playing for the medal. Instead, the United States will be facing Chechia. I don't know if you saw that that fun celebration tweet that I put out this morning that I, the IHF put out, actually, and I just retweeted it. But those are the fun stories. Those are the things you love to see at the World Championship. Just just sort of the joy of it, Petey. And you can certainly feel it in Chechia's room. And then the other semifinal, of course, will be Canada against Switzerland. So a couple of countries wow. that maybe you wouldn't expect to be here, but clearly the U S and Canada still heavily favored to meet each other in the final. The U S is, I can't even remember what the goal total is. Something like 30 to three. They've outscored opponents in this tournament. It's insane. This is the first time you're starting to see a little bit of parody in that second tier. I still think it's USA and Canada and, on, but countries are catching up. Japan played in a shootout that yeah, just missed that? the medal round. Like it, they, that's a huge step for their program. You're seeing, you know, it's used to be Finland, Sweden, Canada, U S and now it's not. So it is great to see some parity. It's a great tournament. We talk about the, you know, the world championships and the world juniors and, and anytime you get down to the world stage, I am excited and I hate to say it. I hate it, waiting for the USA Canada matchup. Um, it's great hockey and it's a huge grudge match when those two sweaters get on the ice. I don't care what level or who's playing the peewee tournament you put on USA and Canada. People are watching. So this is going to be a great tournament. I, Americans are going to be tough to beat. I, I don't yeah. want to tell my Canadian friends and counterparts, but the Americans are going to be hard, hard to beat in this tournament. They were pretty tough on Canada the first go round in this tournament, but this is this is a new round, and and like you said, this is a rivalry, so things could change. Uh, I'm I'm actually looking forward to the the championship game. Um, whoever's in it, really, I'll, I'll, well, if it's Switzerland, Czechia, I'll still be watching. In fact, I'll be watching with fascination if that happens. And it's it's fall is here, Craig. It's in the air, as they say. Well, not necessarily in the air in Arizona, but around the country. We got training camps coming. You got guys skating at the ice den, getting ready for their training camps, and then two other big events. One of which happens next week is the one-year anniversary of PHNX. I'm surprised mildly that it's it's it seems does it seem longer than a year? I guess when the season's on and the Coyotes are losing a bunch, it might seem longer. But I can't believe it's only been a year since we've been doing this. We need a cake. We gotta get a cake with the number one. <laughs> it's like, yeah. What is it with you and food? It's, it literally always comes back to food. I'm food motivated, PD. It's always how it's been. Oh, good <laughs> grief! Yeah, I guess. I guess I'll take it. It's good. we got a lot going on. I think we have stuff planned. Do we have stuff planned? Oh yeah, yeah I don't have stuff planned. We got a big badge. We well, do. Yeah, you mean in terms of content? Yeah. Well, if we're gonna yeah. have a, a fun show that day. I've got a story moving that day. I'm sure the other beats have stuff planned as well. So yeah, we're we're gonna be celebrating. We're gonna review it's some of our ride. greatest moments over the last year and mm -hmm. uh, it should be fun way i know lee has been working really hard because i know i haven't been so it's <laughs> not coming from me so hopefully somebody's doing something can we just I've pause and talk about that up. for a moment all the little things that leah does behind the scenes that both you it's and i unreal. are now getting a feel for when she's out of town she, um, i tell you what the appreciation for at leah merrill is at an all-time high she yes. works <laughs> so hard at phnx she is definitely the mvp um yeah and we miss her get home leah please fly home safe no no canceled flights get home um, we desperately, desperately need you. But yeah. I know she's been working hard on stuff for next week's um, year anniversary. We've been talking. We went in the Discord, 
and asked for people to give us their favorite moments over the last year. And I tell you what, there's things I'd already forgotten. Most of it's because I'm getting old and I forget stuff. But there is some really good stuff coming up um, on the show. So you don't want to miss all the stuff we've got planned for next week. And unfortunately, you're not invited to the potluck and Craig and Craig and his wife and my wife and I are probably going to be going to the PHNX staff potluck and we're sitting there contemplating what the heck we're going to bring to the potluck. So I don't know. What oh, buddy, I've already potluck. signed up. Did you? Come on. What are you bringing? Oh, you got to, you got to read the list, buddy. I'm buying the list. I don't read, the list. List. I don't read emails. I don't read lists. I don't like the schedule. I, if, I'm not going to start now. So I'll, okay. I'll take it'll it just be a surprise for you when you get there. It will be a surprise. It'll be a surprise that I'm there, but. I'm kind of kind of looking forward to it. The other thing that's happening right now in the fall is ASU football and ASU football literally kicked off to did they kicked off last night um, at home in a big win against NAU. Unfortunately, I can't watch it. That big 12, it's so hard to find pac 12, big 12. I yeah. said big 12 because of the merge, yeah, but the pac 12 can't find it. And this is part of the issue, right? With the pac 12, right. this has been an issue can't forever. Larry Scott never got this figured out. Nope. And I understood there's some wrangling and the, the, you have to have to set certain demands as, as a conference commissioner, but man, the, the pac 12 networks, like, I hate to say this cause I know some people that work there, but it's basically been a failure for this conference. They, they just did such a poor job. And, and I mean, that's part of the reason when you when you look at the exits of UCLA and USC and mind you, I think it was shady and this, this sort of backdoor stuff that yeah. they were doing and not even to tell them that was that's slimy. And I, I don't respect those schools for that. But it's always about money. And UCLA and UC, USC didn't feel they were being taken advantage of enough. You know, what are you doing for us? We're, we're the big players in this conference. We don't feel like we're being utilized well enough, so we're going to go to the Big Ten. So here we are with the Pac-12. But I'm off track here because I did pay attention to the Sun Devil game last night, and they did what they needed to do against NAU, which is something, you know, the the program to the south did not do one year ago. Um, you know, I, I think the only one unhappy about ASU's performance last night was was our very own Michael Luke, who uh, was tweeting very early in the game and then suddenly went silent as ASU started to pull away and it turned into a rout. ASU did what it needed to do yeah. last night against NAU. Huge test next week well, at Oklahoma State. But a couple of things here. I followed the game through our PHNX um, Sun Devil Twitter feed and, and all the guys that are on that beat because, I, like I said, I don't get the Pac-12 network. So that was my, my first thought. But to your point, the easy and cool the Jets a, a little bit. Don't get the bowl tickets quite ready today. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's 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 NAU and, and everybody's pumping their tires like we beat. Yeah, you beat NAU. Like, aren't you supposed to? Isn't that the thing? Like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see as the season rolls along. I'm happy for him. It's great. It's the hype is great. And I, I love right. the ASU program and, and, and the university. All of those things are true. But just hang on. You know, yeah, you can nitpick too and temper. say, well, some of these things didn't work in the game, but it's the first game. That's what that's where you iron out those sorts of things. That's why you play a team of NAU's caliber. But in the end, ASU didn't struggle with NAU, right? It, it wasn't a close game no, where you're no. like, oh my gosh. A lot of good individual performance to good. do. So that's yep. that's a good first step. Hundred percent agree with you. Great, great way to start. And now that the college football season is here, Craig, get to your phone and get on that DraftKings Sportsbook app. As I know, I did because I reached out to the ASU Sun Devil crew and said it's twenty five and a half is the spread. Do I hammer it? And I was told by all three of those gentlemen to hammer it, which I luckily did, and I hammered um, ASU in the over yesterday, and I one nice nfl season is just around the corner too that's next week and so download the sports i see i, see, I stumble well, leah where are you download the directing sportsbook app now and use the promo code phnx to get 200 dollars in free bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet on any football game that's code phnx only at the DraftKings sportsbook app an official sports betting partner of the nfl Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And I will say this, Craig, I am so happy because I, I'm a, I'm not a DraftKings junkie, but when hockey season's on, I watch a lot of hockey, and it makes the hockey games much more interesting. But football, man, is it is it fun to, to have a little a little skin in the game, as it were? So um, I kept my eye maybe a little bit closer on the SU game than I normally did, thanks to DraftKings. And one other thing that keeps you comfortable more furniture and you can go if you could if we give a tour of the new studio if we ever go craig and i never go because we just don't but when we do 
we will give you a tour with all of the fantastic furniture that Moore has supplied. And they've given us the theater room with the recliners, with the cup holders and the desks, desk chairs. I tell you what, they've really pimped out our office. It's awesome. And we want you to go check out all of the stuff at Moore Furniture too. Get, get, um, get on morefurniture.com. That's more, M-O-R, morefurniture.com. Check out their Labor Day sale. Um, there's a lot going on there this weekend. So if you need any furniture, go check out morefurniture.com. That's M-O-R furniture.com. PD, I'll have to take shots of your calves in one of those recliners because those have become a thing on our show. Oh, but I tell you what, and I was there because I know you haven't been yet, but I was there when we placed the chairs in like Jacob Franklin, who is pr producing our show today, is the tallest member of our staff. He's like seven foot two, seven one. I don't know, he's big. <laughs> but when we, to test all of our stuff, we put Jacob in the front row and said, well, if, you know, where do we align the chairs so we can all see? We have, if Jacob were to sit in the front row, but Jacob worked so hard, he's never sitting down watching games anyway, so we didn't have to really worry about it. We were more worried about some of the other staff members who probably won't get out of those chairs. But it's it's unbelievable view, and can't wait to see some Coyote games there because the best thing about the new studio is we can have Suns on one TV, Coyotes on the other. We've always been split, Coyotes crew in one room, Suns crew in another, watching our, our individual games. Now we can all hang out together. So that's one yeah. thing PHNX has, has done really well is creating a family. So yeah, I'll get to see it for the first time on Friday. Looking forward to that. But moving on to the rest of our show, I think people know by now that I wrote a bit on Travis Boyd last week. Um, interesting story, of course, last season for a guy who, when he came over, Toronto media told me, yay, it's just a guy. He's just a guy. He'll be fourth line center. He'll be in and out of the lineup. Nope. Travis Boyd did a lot more than that. He had a career year uh, in basically all of off, all of the offensive numbers. But not only did I write a story about him, we also had the chance to catch up with him for a pre-recorded segment that did include Leah Merrill. And so, as Jacob Fra Franklin takes the reins here, here it is. We're super excited to be welcomed by Arizona Coyotes forward, Travis Boyd. Travis, welcome to the PHNX Coyotes podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Excited to be here. Well, first of all, we know you've been skating at the ice den a little bit with, you know, that larger crew that's been there every day. But recap our summer for us, your summer for us. What have you been up to? Have you traveled? What did you go see and do? What have you been up to? Um, yeah, I guess, honestly, it's been a pretty, um, pretty normal summer. Not too much. Um, family and I were down here until like the end of May. So we stayed down here a while after uh, the season ended last year uh, for our daughter to finish up school. And then we went back to Minnesota and spent, uh, what, like two and a half months back up there. Um, which is obviously nice, um, just for us being from there, that's still home. So it's always nice to go back and see family and see friends that, um, obviously you don't see during the season. And, uh, yeah, I got back down here, um, a couple weeks ago and, uh, moved into a new house down here. So it's been a, it's been a busy first couple of weeks back, but uh, happy to be back down here because uh, myself and uh, my family as well, just uh, we kind of have fallen in love with Arizona so far. So <laughs> even this time of year. <laughs> yeah, actually, though, it hasn't been too it hasn't been too bad since uh, since we've got down here. Yeah. Surprised about how much it's rained, though. Yeah, this has been, uh, been unusual, but we need it. But before we get into your pro career, I wanted to ask a little bit about your past. And Petey will probably make us linger in your past for longer than is comfortable for anybody because he's a Minnesota guy yep. as well. Um, but we know you're a Minnesota guy, Hopkins High, just west of Minneapolis, right? Uh, yeah. You played in the Beauty League. I think you said, told me Alex Goligoski was your teammate for, for a bit. Yeah, but, well, the last couple of years. Yeah, but that whole thing in perspective, having grown up, in the area, what is it like for a kid? I don't think people in Arizona really understand this because we don't have any sort of equivalent, but what's it like for a kid who grows up in the shadow of Minnie and the University of Minnesota to commit and go play for the Golden Gophers? Yeah, so uh, to be honest, um, and again, I, maybe some of it was, I guess, just by timing too, but like when I was growing up and first started to really get into hockey, um, the Wild weren't around yet. Um, so the biggest show in town, uh, which actually going back a step, seems weird that there was for a period of time, not an NHL team in Minnesota, <laughs> but, yeah. um, so there was a, you know, a handful of years that, you know, the biggest show in town was the golfers. Um, and, and for me growing up in that time, like I still remember, um, this would be even back before my family got cable. Um, but my grandma had cable. And so on Friday and Saturday nights, we'd literally drive, my parents would drive me and my brother and my sister up to my grandma's house and we would literally 
go there specifically to watch the Gopher games. Um, and then right around that time, they just happened to win back-to-back national championships. And um, so for me, honestly, uh, it was really a dream come true. Um, you know, I grew up wanting to, to play for the Gophers just as much as I, I wanted to make it to the NHL. Um, so for me, looking back on it, to spend four years there and to be part of, um, obviously, some really good teams. We made it to the Frozen Four twice in my four years and uh, national championship game one year. Um, which still stings because Shane Gosses Bear was on the other team that ended up beating us. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, for me it was uh, it was a dream come true, and and um, definitely four years that um, I guess I'll always remember because, like I said, that was kind of my first uh, my first real hockey dream. So you got to play for the Gophers, and then we talk about what guys do over the summer. And I'm a Minnesota kid. Craig mentioned that I'm way up north, up in Bemidji. But who doesn't want to be a Gopher? Well, I didn't, but I was a fighting Sioux, but I digress. <laughs> um, so you go over the summer and you train, and we talked about the Beauty League, and we had Nick Bustad on last week talking about the Beauty League. I want to know a little bit more about how that that experience is for you because it's guys from all over. Like, it's NHL guys from all kinds of teams. you got college kids playing there. Tell people a little bit about what the Beauty League is like and what playing like in that is like for you. Uh yeah, I mean, I guess it, uh, well, first of all, I think it's a really cool idea and I'm almost surprised it took so long for someone to start it. And I think, I think the beauty league was the first one, but since the beauty league has been going for, I don't know, five, six, whatever, how many years now, there's been a lot of other pop-up ones around the country, but, um, yeah, no, it's just a fun, it's a fun way to, uh, I guess, get a quality skate in, um, you know, and, and there are some nights where maybe you're not as into it as others. Um, but yeah, it's just essentially, um, I don't know, a glorified men's league, um, (laughs) with NHL players. Yeah. So it's not, yeah. High players. I mean, it's not, it's not a men's league, but it's, it's just a kind of go out there and you play four on four, you do like two 23 minute halves. And I mean, a lot of the nights, your final score is, you know, 13 to 10 or something like that. But <clears throat> as you get later into the the summer, it definitely starts to pick up. And I think the fun thing about it is, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know the exact numbers, but we play in a pretty decent sized high school rink and it's open for fans to come. I think they charge like five bucks maybe. And the nice thing too about the charge is all that money goes back to charity as well. That's so great. Um, that's a nice part of it, but it's also fun because I mean, there are nights where I bet you're playing in front of three, four 5,000 people, you know? So it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun way to get a quality skate. And that's how, that's how I would put it. It's also fun to see the guys that, you know, you end up playing against during the year and you start to kind of get some friendships, um, just from the beauty league. Like, I like you had already mentioned, I, the last, I know, I think the last this year, and I think last year for sure too, um, and maybe one other year I, I played with Alex Goligoski and that was kind of where I had, had really first, first met him. But I, I think from just playing with him for the last few years, I think I'd probably say we have a pretty decent friendship now. And whenever I play him throughout the season, I always, you know, say hi to him or catch him in the hallway after the game and just check in and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's just a fun, it's a fun way and it definitely gets competitive, um, towards the end of the summer. And, and um, you know, you play for a, empty keg of beer or whatever it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> cup. but um you know i think we're all competitive guys so when it gets down to it and you get into the the playoff week which actually i think is is uh happening around this time and um yeah it gets competitive i was lucky enough to win it one year and and it's uh it's it's still a fun time so uh, my last thing on Minnesota, so do you keep a place there? Do you, do you own a home there? Are you on a yeah. lake? Because we talk about players here and everybody's got to be on the water. So do yeah. you have a place on the water in Minnesota? Um, no, I, well, I do own a house back in Minnesota, um, but I don't. It's not on the lake. It's, um, it's just in a neighborhood. But uh, my family has had a, a lake place since I was, you know, a little kid. And um, so we end up finding time whether it's you know like the fourth of july weekend or fourth of july week we usually go up there plus another weekend or two throughout the course of the summer so um in my lake places well i guess it's not really bemidji but it's up in like the detroit lakes area so um kind of in the middle of nowhere which is nice it's not too busy of a lake you can kind of go enjoy yourself and it's always nice to go up there it's a nice change of pace from being down in the cities in the minneapolis area and 
um, yeah, I grew up, you know, fishing. I grew up doing water sports. I, I grew up doing all that. So it's always fun to, uh, to go up there and spend some time. Like I said, it's a, a nice change of pace from being down in the cities. As long as we're taking a uh, voyage through the hockey world, I wanted to ask you about another really cool stop you made along the way with Hershey of the AHL. That that arena, that franchise, that city, it's, it's a really cool atmosphere, and I don't think a lot of people are familiar with it. They regularly top the AHL in attendance. I think that arena holds like 10,000 people, which is yeah. insane for the AHL. What was that whole experience like in that town, that fan base, that organization? Yeah, honestly, I had a really good experience in Hershey. Um, again, I was lucky enough to be on some good teams. And like my first year there, we went all the way to the Calder Cup finals and everything. And um, I guess I would sum it up by saying you won't really find a more passionate city. You know, even if you look at NHL cities and, and really good passionate NHL cities where they have fans who who care so much but you you I mean that's that's Hershey too you know I remember mm -hmm. there there were games you know where you know we end up getting kind of blown out at home and you're getting booed by your fans you're you know you're hearing the local radio shows the next morning talking about how bad you played and how terrible the team is and everything and um I guess there's kind of this thing with the American league where like, yes, it is a, it's like a development league, right. Where like it's yeah. for the NHL team and, and you're developing your young guys to try and make it to the NHL and stuff like that. But, and Hershey does that too. I'm not saying they don't, but they're one of the few American league teams that actually cares about winning. They want to win a call their cup every year. And, and um, I think a lot of that has to do with, with well, one, their history, they have tremendous history. Um, you know, I, the amount of names that have come through and played in Hershey, mm -hmm. it's actually incredible um, going all the way back to the, the way early years, but um, their fan base is really passionate. They've won. I don't even know how many Calder cups, 10, 12 Calder cups. And, um, and they, they try and win one every year, which I think is different than, than other American league teams, but it's also a really fun place to play. Like you said, 10,000, uh, seat arena which I mean and it's a very nice facility too and um, so very different than some of the American League cities that you go to for sure um, but you get treated really well you get treated basically like an NHL team and like I said I, I really enjoyed my time there I had a lot of you know I guess two and a half really good years there and and uh, definitely look back with fond memories of playing there because it uh, was a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to play there Aaron Ness was one of your teammates wasn't he one yeah, yeah. yeah. He, um, I think he was there. Actually, he was there for I think my whole two and a half years. Actually, um, and I think he actually he just resigned there this summer too. He's going back, so yeah. He'll be, uh, he, yeah, he's gonna do well there. Um, yeah, but I I love Nasser. He's a really good guy too. I wanted to talk a little bit about what we chatted about uh, when when I interviewed you uh, for the story. Um, You've signed two-year deals in the past. Obviously, your two-year ELC with the Caps out of, out of Minnesota, another two-year deal with the Caps. But when we talked uh, at the Ice Den, you, you called this contract maybe the biggest moment of your pro career. Why do you feel that way? I'm assuming it's having to do with what happened last season. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and again, we had talked about this when, when we were doing our interview, but um, yeah, I guess for me, I, I – I mean, and again, it's it's hard in the NHL to, to even get opportunities and to, you know, and again, some of that was from where I started and I happened to just start in an organization, which I mean, in Washington's a great organization, but they were in Stanley Cup mode and they're in Stanley Cup mode every year. And and um, I just I guess I never really felt like I got a chance to really be much more than, you know, a fourth line player for them. And um, and then after that, I, I went to. Toronto or assigned with Toronto um, and they were kind of in that same boat and um, yeah I guess coming into last season I you know obviously you kind of look in the mirror a few times and realize I was going to be 28 going into that season which isn't necessarily young anymore um, and I just wanted an opportunity I wanted an opportunity to be something more than a fourth line player I always felt like I I could be and I've always felt like I could I could do more offensively and um, like, uh, like I told you, the stars kind of aligned here with an opportunity and, um, 
I said that the thing I'm most proud about is I got the opportunity that I wanted, but more importantly, I took advantage of it. Um, and I guess for me, the reason why I'd say it's, it was probably the biggest moment of my career is it, it, I mean, who knows, you know, if I didn't have a good season last year and didn't take advantage of the opportunity I had in Arizona, it, I could have ended up, you know, signing an American league deal this year or getting a two way or, or something like that. So it took a huge step forward for my career and it kind of, I don't want to say, you know, revitalized me or kind of gave me more energy, but it got me excited again. And, and um, yeah, I mean, it's the reason why I'm probably the most excited I've been in a long time coming into this season. Uh, I really looking forward to, to hopefully taking another step forward and hopefully, you know, trying to improve on, on the year I had last year. A couple more questions from me and then I'll let Leah and Petey jump in. But when you're in that situation with the Caps, like you said, they're in Stanley Cup mode uh, with the Maple Leafs, the same thing. And you get pegged by some people as, you know, he's a fourth line center and that's, that's his ceiling. You never believed it. You told me that. But how does a guy that's that deep into his pro career, how do you keep the faith, Travis? How do you, how do you keep that belief system when you just keep getting thrust into the same role over and over again? Yeah. And I mean, you know, it definitely gets hard. You know, I've had a lot, I've had a lot of hard days going through that um, and thinking that maybe I would never get to the point where I'm at right now here with Arizona. But um, God, and I think the most important thing is to just to continue to believe, to continue to believe in yourself. You know, there was, I guess there was always a quote that I've always liked and that's if, if you don't believe in yourself, why would anyone else believe in you type of thing? And um, I've, I've just known, and I had, you know, obviously I have a really good support team around me, whether it's, you know, my agents, family, and um, just other people who have, who've helped me out in the past. And the one thing they kept saying is, you know, everyone's path is kind of different. You know, some people get, drafted in a high round they get a bunch of opportunities right away and 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 all that whereas I think if you look at my career it's been um I've had to kind of earn everything that I've gotten um I had to had had to have good years in the minors before I even got a sniff to come up to Washington and I had to do well in Washington to to continue to stay in the lineup because it was a very competitive organization at the time um but I guess I just always kept believing that if I continue to get better every single year, I continue to try and improve on the things I need to improve on that one day I would get an opportunity. And, and then, like I said, the most important thing is you can get the opportunity, but you got to take advantage of it. Um, and so I guess, I guess for me, it's, it's just continuing to believe that you can do it and to continue to, to try and have the confidence and, um, you know, like I said, the thing I'm most proud about is I got the opportunity last year, and, and I think I did a pretty good job of, of taking advantage of that. You mentioned your agent, Ben Hankinson, another Minnesota guy, by the by the way, Petey, so you can, can be happy about that. But one of the more likable guys in this business, very personable guy. You mentioned to me that he had a pretty big role in all of this. Obviously, your agent's going to help you decide where to go, but it seemed like it was a little deeper than on a personal level. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of what I was saying. You know, I've had a I've had a really good support team around me in, in, in all my pro years, I guess, in, in all of my life, and for that matter. But um, but yeah, you know, and, and again, going into last year's free agency before I had you know signed in Arizona, I remember sitting down with with him and essentially just telling him that I wanted an opportunity. Um, you know, and and again, I kind of told him like I I don't I didn't really care if it was a team that was you know going to be any good. Like I would be on the, you know, one of the bottom end teams of the league if, if that meant I got a chance to play 15, 18 minutes a night. Um, because again, like I said, I was, you know, I was going to be 28 going into last year. So I wasn't, uh, you know, a 22, three, four year old where an organization would be more willing to take a chance on you because you're a little bit younger. So I kind of felt like it was a little bit of a do or die moment for my career and, and, I kind of just sat down and said to him, like, I want a chance to, to be something more than a fourth line player. Um, so that was kind of our main goal going into free agency. And, and again, couldn't be more thankful for the Coyotes organization for even giving me a chance. Um, but um, again, you know, like I, like I've said before on here, I, it's one thing to get the opportunity and it's another thing to take advantage of it. And again, I think it just goes back to what I was saying. You know, I've always, 
thought to myself, or I guess I've always believed in myself that if I got the opportunity, I could do what I did last year. And, and again, that's why I'm super excited to, uh, to start this season and to hopefully even take another step forward here. So when you got to Arizona or, or you signed that contract, did you have a conversation with either Bill Armstrong or um, Coach Turney about what your role would be like when you first signed? Uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it wasn't really a you know conversation about you know what specifically my role would be. I, I just remember the first time I talked to Bill, and we had a you know it was kind of a quick conversation, maybe only five minutes, but he essentially said that there's plenty of opportunity down here, um, and that's going to be up to you as a as a player and a person to either get the opportunity, and if you do get the opportunity, to to take advantage of it. Um, and that was actually, I mean, that was, that was all I needed to hear from him. I didn't need to hear anything else. That was exactly what I was hoping for. And, and again, even if you look at the start of last year, honestly, it didn't even, didn't even start that good for me. Um, you know, it wasn't until things got going maybe, you know, a month into the season before I, I really actually got a, a true chance. And, and, uh, again, things worked out. Uh, and again, obviously it helps to get, get a chance to play with some really good players like uh, Kells or Nick Schmaltz or, you know, Phil Kessel or Lawson Kraus and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, things worked out really well. And, and again, I think, uh, like I said, I'm just you know, proud of myself for, for taking advantage of that. You talk about Schmaltz and Keller. <clears throat> when the three of you got together in that line, that's when things really started to click, not just for you, but for, for the whole team. I think that's where their offense really started to come out when you were with Schmaltz and Keller. And I think that's when, when you were at your best. What was it about that line? What was it about playing with those two guys that just worked? Um, yeah, I mean, well, it helps that they're both very good and they're both very skilled. Um, but ultimately, I think uh, I think it was just kind of the way that we all thought the game. I think we all thought the same. I think we all – you know, we're trying to do the same thing out there. And I mean, I guess that's chemistry in a nutshell, right? So um, we all wanted to play the same way and we were all thinking the same things out there. Um, and that's kind of why I think it was, um, I guess, an easy, well, not easy transition, but I think things worked out right away is because I think we all, you know, they don't they don't want to dump the puck in and, and go try and forecheck it and hit somebody and get it back. They want to keep possession of it the whole time. And and make plays and find the open guy and hold on to it. And, and I, like I said, I think I've always, I've always believed that's the kind of player that I was too. If you go back in my, you know, throughout my career, it wasn't until I really got to the NHL level where I started playing in, in a fourth line or maybe even a third line role where it might be a little different. Even in my American league time in Hershey, I was always a, you know, first line center type thing and, and was putting up a lot of points and everything. So that's the way I want to play the game. And, and I think, uh, I think we just really gelled because I think we are all on the same, uh, we're all on the same page. You know, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to play. Um, let's go out there and, and freaking dominate the other team. Like there's no reason why we can't. So, um, it was a lot of fun getting to play with them last year. And, and, um, yeah, again, I don't, who knows what the lines will be this year or how any of that'll happen. And if we get together again this year, I think, uh, again uh played together for quite a bit of last year so hopefully we'll be even uh better than we were last year so you you had your career high in points assist goals your career offensive output in the national hockey league does that make you over the summer go i gotta set the bar higher does that make you set different internal goals or what do you personally travis boyd expect to get out of your season this year what does your season look like um yeah i mean i think it does i think it raises the bar i mean i think if you want to continue to get better you have to raise the bar right like you can't come in and have the same goals that I had last year after the season I had so um yeah I definitely you know had my internal uh my internal goals have changed they've definitely um you know rose they've they've, they're more this coming season and um you know it's one thing to sit here and say numbers and I think you know some people will say oh I need to have x amount of goals or x amount of assists and points but like I, I don't know. Like sometimes you get lost in that and that kind of changes your, your thinking on, you know, how you're playing and everything. So I don't, I don't necessarily, I mean, yeah, there's a target number of goals and points I'd like to get this year, but ultimately it'd just be more than last year. Um, but more importantly, I just want to continue to, to get better. I know. And I think, you know, I talked to Craig about this and when we were talking the other day about um, or the interview we were doing that um, if you looked at my game from the start of last year, you know, 
in October, November, and even in the December to where I finished the year and, and the plays that I was even trying to make towards the end of the year, I wouldn't, you know, I maybe would have thought of them in the games earlier in the year, but I probably would have never tried them because I realized that if it doesn't work out, well, all of a sudden you're going back to the bench and the coach is going to be pissed at you. Um, and, you know, and maybe you're not in that situation where you can, you know, try that play or whatever. Um, so that, that for me is, is kind of where, where I want to, or where my goals are is to continue to go out there and try and make plays every night. Um, continue to try and, and, and kind of grow my game, I guess, and continue to, to, to make plays and to, to try and help the team offensively. And then continue to obviously got to play. If coach listens to this, I got to say, we, we got to play good defense too. So I got to be in the defensive zone, but get the uh, 200 foot game going, Travis. Yeah. Nice job. We'll, we'll clip that part and send it on. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just in case Bear is listening on this, but um but yeah, so it's maybe not maybe not so much numbers. I just want to continue to to get better, and and that for me would be, um, you know, making plays every night. You know, you're not going to score every night. You're not going to get a point every night. But there's you should be able to generate offense every night still. Um, so I look a lot on like scoring chances. Um, were you part of a few scoring chances each night? Were you, you know, did you feel like you were at least generating some sort of offense because again like you get stuck in the goals assists and points thing and eventually if you go through a couple game stretch where you have nothing then all of a sudden you start forcing it and everything like that so um just mm -hmm. just continue to take a step forward continue to to try and to uh to make plays to generate offense and uh, i think at that point if you're creating scoring chances every night the points will take care of itself through an 82 game series or 82 game season so we have to ask, so because ASU just unveiled the name of the multipurpose arena, Mullet Arena. So first of all, I want to know your thoughts on the name of the arena itself. Um, fantastic name, but also just, you know, it's the, the talk of the hockey community about this arena and the situation for you guys playing there. So just from your perspective, your overall thoughts on Mullet Arena. Uh, well, I think in terms of playing hockey in an arena called Mullet Arena, it really does fit pretty darn nicely. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I kind of got a hoot out of that when I first saw that, that was going to be the name of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the name's good. Like I said, it suits hockey really well. Um, but also excited. I mean, yeah, there's it's been the talk of hockey and everything. And I, I guess for me, I you know, and maybe I didn't really realize this until I started, came down here last year and played. And like, there's way there's way more hockey fans down here than any person that hasn't lived here would even imagine. You know, I think the, the circumstances with the arena being, you know, kind of on the other side of town away from everybody was, you know, kind of the reason why maybe the attendance wasn't as strong. But I really do believe that this is a hockey market down here. Um, and I, I really do think that if the long term goal comes through and then hopefully it does, that they they're able to build what they want to build in Tempe, that this I, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't sell out every night, honestly. Um and again, there, there'll probably be some, some tough, uh, especially early in the season, maybe some tough, uh, tough games at, at the, the ASU arena or mullet arena, I should call it now because we have a name <laughs> for it. Um, but I think it'll be fun too. I mean, heck, you can pack 5,000 people into there and, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a smaller arena, but you put 5,000 people in there, it should be loud. It should be a good atmosphere and, and it should be a lot of fun. So, um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. And, and like I said, I think long-term goal, if they can put together what they want to put together in Tempe, um, boy, this has got to be arguably one of the better places to play in the league. Cause like I said, there's so many hockey fans down here. Um, you go to the ice den, any one of the ice dens around here and the ice is literally, you can't get ice because it's literally booked from six in the morning until midnight every single night. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's actually a really good hockey market. Have you ever had a mullet? Um, you know what? I think I have actually. Yeah, mm, I think when I was <laughs> back when I was at the U.S. program, um, it just we were going to like our U18 World Championships or whatever. I think they were in Germany, but there was like half the team that got on board with uh, going with mullet haircuts over there as kind of a team bonding thing before it. So. 
and it also kind of helped that the uh, the family I was staying with, the mom of the family, just happened to own her own hair salon. So <laughs> oh. it was pretty easy just to sit in the kitchen and have her quickly give me a mall <laughs> in 10 minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I'm picturing it now, Travis. Lastly, this is on a Friday show that this is on, and I, we're going to put you on the spot. So I apologize for that in advance. But every Friday over the summer, this crew does Friday Fun Day. And before we head off for the weekend, we have a segment that we call the weekend binge, where we recommend some kind of a streaming show. It could be a TV show. It can be a movie, something you just watched, something you're going to watch. But Travis, what is your weekend binge? Oh, all right. Yeah. Putting me on the spot for sure. Um, I don't know. I'm a I really enjoy golf that's kind of my getaway from hockey <laughs> nice. um, so, so either I, watch it so do you watch golf all weekend i do, do watch, yeah, watch oh, quite a bit gosh. Uh, i kind of get into that um i tend to fall into quite a bit of a rabbit hole of golf videos uh whether that's just fixing yourself or just watching other people golf but um, wow who knew yeah um i don't know other than that i that's okay that, not that I've even seen it, but the new Game of Thrones spinoff or whatever oh, just started. Yeah, could, sure everybody's got to say that. It's so good, PD. You have to give I know, it a but chance. A year ago, we did this with Chick and Kels, and what did they all say? They said every one of them said Yellowstone, and I oh, said okay. no. Yeah, that, yeah. I watched it. Unreal. So now everybody's yeah. saying we've had Fish on. He said Game of, everybody's Game of Thrones. So I, maybe I'll have to. <laughs> Fish should admit to watching the entire first you know, he watched he Game of Thrones point. from eight first, seasons. one season through eight season again this before this thing started. That's just yeah. crazy. That's, that's dedication. Yeah, to be honest, like I, I never was really into that Game of Thrones. I think I've seen maybe like the first season, and then after that, it was oh, it's it's long. I mean, <laughs> it's like hour, it's a commitment. hour yeah, episodes. For sure, it's a commitment. A shift watching it. I just know that's what everyone's talking about these days. The first <laughs> yeah. Game of Thrones spin off that started. Supposedly, it's really good too, but. I don't know. You can go ahead and thanks, Travis. That. You'll Either stick with golf. Watch, watch the <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Travis, thank you so much for joining us and taking the time. Really great talking to you, and hopefully, we'll get a chance to talk to you again as the season gets underway. So, thanks yeah, again. Absolutely. Would love it. Thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Well, we finish up with Travis Boyd with the binge. So we're going to go right into the binge. First of all, <laughs> our weekend binge. And, and, you know, let's let's see what Travis Boyd. It was a great interview. Uh, let's see if he can put another season together like he had last year. Works incredibly hard. Played with some really good players. Fits up and down the, the lineup on, the, on the, the front end. Can pretty much slot in anywhere. Wins, draws. Plays the right way. So I'm hoping he can he can do it again this year and, and have another season like he had last season. So let's go to the weekend binge. Craig, what do you got, Pete? Are you gonna let me go first? Yeah, of course. Well, I, I got a couple things. I'll make it really quick. Okay. I, I'm going movies. I'm going movies for the weekend. I did pick up a series. It's American Horror Stories, not oh, story. Oh boy, it's different story. Follows one story through the whole season. Stories is an anthology show that's different every time. Again, dark, a little bit quirky, off. Not for everybody. That's on Hulu. But two movies. Um, I, I started last night. And we're going to finish today. And we talked to Leah about this. Major League One, the original. <laughs> if, if, if you haven't seen it, I don't know why, because you, you got the young Charlie Sheen, you got a little baseball story and playoff baseball is coming. So major league. And then the other one is premiering this week on the HBO max going with Elvis with Tom Hanks starring as Colonel Tom Parker and a young Austin Butler kid that I watched with my son on, on all the Nickelodeon and Disney shows like Hannah Montana and I Carly and all those shows stars as Elvis. And I tell you what, if you haven't seen the trailer, absolutely phenomenal portrayal does his own singing. So it's Elvis as the movie finishing Major League and American Horror Stories. That's my weekend binge. Craig, I saw that movie in theaters. It was actually terrific. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously stick with Rings of Power because that's uh, that's out now. Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. You got to watch it. House of Dragon is in full flower now. I think episode three comes out this weekend. I'm gonna go back to a couple wrecks that I made that I was just starting, and now I finished season one of each. We're not beyond season one of each. But both of them are terrific. Dark Winds, uh, sort of a murder mystery that takes place on the, the uh, Navajo Nation, the Dine Nation uh, uh, in Arizona, in a little bit in Utah. You know, it spans a couple different states. But that's a that's a fascinating show to watch. The other one is The Old Man. I'm a huge Jeff Bridges fan. And this just reminded me of how much I like him as an actor. This is a really good series. It's 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 not 
It's not explosions. It's not locks of action. So if that's what you're looking for, go somewhere else. It's storytelling. It's fantastic, unpredictable dialogue. I, I love it. It's real. So I recommend it. And and just so uh, we, we can uh, pimp the uh, Jeff Bridges thing a little bit more. He's 72 years old, Petey. Jeff Bridges is 72. And it made you guys go, go to high school through, together? Yeah. No. It made me go back through, uh, you know, his movies. He's made so many movies and a lot of them great movies. I think the Big Lebowski is the cult movie that everybody yeah. knows. But some, uh, you know, Fisher King and Sea Biscuit. He was terrific in both those movies. A couple more recent movies that people should watch if they haven't. Bad Times at the El Royale, which has a terrific cast, and then Hell or High Water, which which was Oscar worthy, and that only came out a, a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Really good watches. The last thing that I'm going to say that people should binge, Petey, and I'm going to create a segue for oh, you no. here, buddy. They should watch the PHNX Coyotes podcasts. Don't you think? Where where can you watch the PHNX Coyotes podcast? You can oh. catch up all weekend long. And, uh, you know, we talk about the family here at PHNX. We're coming into our one-year anniversary at PHNX. Please sign up, subscribe, become a member of this great community, sports community in Arizona. covers all the Arizona sports. You can uh, listen and <laughs> read craig i mean craig is everywhere so if you need him for a hobby it's definitely on on phnx head over to go phnx.com today become a member of the family and you'll either get a free t-shirt just for signing up from the phnx locker or get your first month for 50 cents just for signing up so jump over to go phnx become part of this family um i tell you what we're in the discord every day i was just talking to the discord this morning um it's a great family if you want anything about arizona sports go to go phnx.com and also if you need tickets to show a concert sporting event like Elvis, if you were still alive, you could jump over to Game Time because it's the best place to get those last minute tickets. Go over to Game Time. Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concert, and shows. You can save up to 60% on tickets when you buy tickets last minute. It's great for all the procrastinators like Craig and I. If you love PHNX, then you'll love Game Time. Please uh, check out the link in the description. If you're going anywhere this weekend, drop down, check out the description, click on where to get Game Time tickets. You can get last minute tickets. Not like Craig and I, where we used to have to sit on the phone, not a cell phone, a real phone, and dial a real phone over and over again to get busy signals until we finally got through so we could get tickets to Brian Adams. And oh, that I never went and saw Brian Adams. You didn't? No, Great show, no, buddy. No, don't put that on me, buddy. That was my first big concert. It was with, was it? With, no, with I, don't, yeah, I, don't, it was. I don't want to cut like a knife. I went to St. Paul Civic Center. It was a true story. Right. The last thing, Craig, we got to do over the weekend is enjoy what a little bit of Four Peaks. Craig turned me on to the Pumpkin Porter this weekend, and I actually might have to go back. We're getting into October. We saw a comment in the in the comments about Halloween is coming, so we're gonna have to do a scary movie for our weekend binge. We also have to drink Pumpkin Porter for our weekend beer one of the great beers at Four Peaks. We just had a, a live show at Four Peaks where we named the most recent toast of the month. Sign up for September's winner of the toast of the month. Um, so you can go to the gophnx.com to sign up and win the toast of the month. So we stakes for September. The toast of the month winner will receive a $50 Four Peaks gift card, a PHNX shirt of your choice, and a PHNX annual membership. Go to gophnx.com. Click on the link. Click on the link in the show notes and always join us at four peaks the last wednesday of every month i am not kidding i am a huge four peak supporter my fridge right now is wow and i went with the rattler red this month the rattler red i, I veered away from kilt lifter and did rattler red because it's baseball playoffs as we just mentioned so head on over to go phnx and try to register for toast of the month and enjoy your four peaks over the weekend craig i'm all about pumpkin porter buddy i've got two six packs in the fridge already so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to this not... long weekend. I'm, I'm looking forward to this long weekend. That maybe like it almost feels like the the calm before the storm. Things are really going to start picking up. We're going to get into next week, and we'll be two weeks out from camp. It's going to be time to start looking ahead to the season. Uh, the rookies are going to be playing in San Jose even earlier than that. Yeah, so... a few weeks. <sighs> yeah, I put the, I actually printed now. the Coyote schedule yesterday and put it on my fridge, and it's becoming very real. And it's like, oh yeah. boy, it, it's coming go. really quick. And I tell you, those games are, are are fast and hard in the beginning. Like they're there, it's a tough schedule. This is going to be a daunting, daunting schedule for this this crew, and not just the players, the coaches, the staff. This this first twenty four games is going to be mm. a really tough go. Um, I'm really looking forward to looking at the standings after their uh, first twenty four games. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's coming quick. Um, anything else, Craig, on this Friday before I have to relinquish the hosting duties back to the wonderful at Leah Merrill, who should be and better be back for our next show next Tuesday. Anything else yeah. you've got? 
just advice to Leah Merrill, do not fly Air Canada. Choose yeah, any cool. other carrier to get yourself home. We, we need you home, Leah. <laughs> we, we need you, Leah. <laughs> like, this is the way to make people like really understand your value is to take a few days off. Um, yeah, so Leah, I know, went to the concert last night. You can check her out on Twitter at, at Leah Merrill. Craig is at Craig S. Morgan. I'm at S. Peters Hockey, and the show is PHNX underscore Coyotes. Check us all out. Follow us, like us, ring the bell, subscribe, and... Um, We'll check it back with you next week. I got three live shows again next week, Craig. I don't know if we've got yep. guests lined Tuesday, up. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, live. Yep, yep. We're, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, have, live. Uh, Tuesday's live? Why don't I ever yep, read the Tuesday's schedule? Tuesday's live with Atlanta Gladiators coach Jeff Pyle. He's going to join the show. So we're going to talk to the new, new coach, of, uh, not the new coach, but the coach of the new ECHL affiliate of the Coyotes. He'll be on, on the show Tuesday. Tuesday and, you know, and, and of course, next Friday is the one-year yes. anniversary yes. of PHNX. So we'll be. And we're we'll hoping to be live in the studio, right? Show. Yes, the unveiling yes, the live institute. Can you see my handiwork of that wood floor that I put together with Jacob Franklin and Saul Bookman? I'll see you a little help from Max. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're looking forward. We've got another busy week next week. If you want to follow Coyotes content and any other Arizona sports, make sure you go to gophnx.com and follow everybody. Check it all out. Um, we'll be back next week to the best Coyotes coverage in the Valley. We'll see you next week on Tuesday. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Oh.